what's up guys? So, before we get this video started, I know what you guys are all thinking, okay? Oh my god, Adam, did you get sponsored by Coke? No, I didn't, okay? I, I just thought it looked- I just thought it looked cool, so I bought it. It was from Ancient Emmers. For 421, I, I thought it- I, I, I thought it looked cool. So uh, anyways, let's get this video started. Are you a Marvel fan? Yes? Then you should already know about how strong and mighty the Mad Titan is. And if you don't know who Thanos is, Thanos? Thanos? Tha Thanos? Tha if you don't know who Thanos is, uh, it's the guy with like, the purple ball sack chin, uh, the really wrinkly singular ball sack. Yeah, that one. He was able to take out the entirety of the Avengers, right? And he was able to wipe away half of the universe. Honestly, I would want to wipe away half the universe too if my chin also looked like a wrinkly ball sack. But anyways, very impressive feats, right? Right. Now, some of you may know this, but um, I'm a weeb. <laughs> Yes, that's right. I admit it. I read and watched practically all of the mainstream animes and mangas and some of the lesser known ones. Uh, and so before we start off this listing, I just want to point out that we're going to be comparing MCU Thanos, not the comic Thanos. Why? Because the comic Thanos is known as to be omnipotent, like nigh omnipotent. He's so strong. And the MCU Thanos, he was kind of dimmed down a bit, you know, his power levels. Now, a few characters on this list is able to take down the comic book Thanos. And you'll soon find out why. Why do I keep doing this? Like, that's... But anyways, the MCU Thanos kind of got deep power down a little bit, like I said, because um, they wanted to make like a more realistic fight against the Avengers. His powers aren't as specified in the movies, so we're gonna have to make some assumptions with our imaginations, you know, saw some in some parts of the video. Anyways, even being the strong mofo that he is, that doesn't mean that there's no anime characters that can beat him, you know? In fact, there's quite a few from the lesser known animes and mangas that could totally beat him. For example, like... Kame Tenchi from Tenchi Muyo, Lord of Nightmares from Slayers, and uh, Cory from Cory in the House. And without further ado, let's get this started! Coming in at number 5, we have Transmission Tower Guy from JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. So if you guys watch JoJo's, you should know about this guy. His name's uh, Toyohiro Kanedaichi. I am not good at Japanese pronunciation, so just bear with me, okay? Just... So basically a stand- up. Uh, if you guys don't know what a stand is, it's pretty much like the character's ability, you know, in a fight. Like, you know, his innate ability or I, I don't know how to explain it. In the anime, it's like his ability. And basically his stand or ability is a big transmission tower. Like one of those electrical towers, you know what I mean? Pretty much what it can do is it can trap one person inside at all times. Uh, majority of the time, the person that's trapped inside is the stand holder, which is the main- which is the guy, you know, he's he's always in there because he can't get out. One person has to be in there at all times. That's how- it's kind of how it works. Pretty much the only way for him to leave is if somebody else comes in there. So if, if somebody else steps into the transmission tower, he's free to go. Whoever steps in there is trapped now. So, here's what's gonna happen, okay? Thanos is gonna see him. He's gonna see a huge-ass transmission tower. He's gonna be like, this is some kind of joke. He's gonna get baited into the transmission tower. He's gonna get stuck there. He can't come out anymore. What happens is that if you try to step out after you get into the tower, when you try to reach out and any part of your hand that reaches out, it starts turning into metal. And some of you guys might be thinking, oh, what if he kills the user while he's inside the tower? Well, that doesn't matter, okay? Even if the stand user dies, this transmission tower is still there, okay? It's, it's over. It's, it's still there. The moment he steps into the freaking tower, just roll the credits. It's over. Number four, we have the Anti-Spiral from Gruen Lagan. I can't pronounce these fucking names. So, with the Anti-Spiral, what this guy can... Guy? I, I don't know. It's not really a guy. It's like an it. So what it can do is it can throw galaxies, okay? Galaxies! If that's not enough for you, I don't know what you want from me. He can throw galaxies! Okay, Thanos looked pretty stressed just pulling that small little moon onto the Avengers, okay? Look like a little bitch. But yeah, so the anti spiral is technically a they because it's like a collective consciousness of a bunch of entities. Pe pe I wouldn't even say they're people, okay? I, I don't know how to exactly describe it. It's just like one big black, I mean one big African-American, fuck. Okay, it's, it's like a very darkly shaded individual. Its abilities have been known to rip holes in other universes. That's pretty fucking crazy! Oh, and guess what? They can alter probability. There's people in the Marvel that can also do this, but I mean, like, that's that's pretty strong, you know, on top of throwing a galaxy that's, that's pretty overpowered. You can just throw a galaxy and then alter the probability of Thanos getting hit, which I'm pretty sure is pretty big, because it's a fucking galaxy. Thanos about to get his cheeks clapped. Like that. His cheeks. Alright, now I'm sure you're thinking, if the Anti-Spiral is so strong, how did it lose to Simon and his team? Well, Simon is technically stronger than the Anti-Spiral, but I'm not gonna go into that, and I don't really want to make the list any stronger by adding Simon. Plus, the Anti-Spiral just seemed like such a big entity that would just be cool to include in the list. But, if you guys really want to say, if Simon was to fight Thanos, he would just giga drill the shit out of his anus. That's it, okay? No anus, no sanus. Number three, we have one of my favorites, Itachi Uchiha from Naruto. Shippuden? I, I guess he was technically in the original. The chances of Itachi winning in pure strength 
probably in the negatives. His win rate is probably the same percentage as my IQ. Like seriously, one pimp slap from Thanos, Tachi's gonna go night night. It's it's over. I don't care if he's got Susanos, okay? He's going he's gonna go night night. What gives Itachi the edge is his ocular powers. He possesses something called a Sharing Gun. If you don't know what that is, then wh why the fuck are you even watching a video about anime characters? That that just it's like the basic. You gotta know about a Sharingan. Anyways, with the Sharingan, he's able to predict movements, cast Genjutsu, and he can also, the most important part, he's able to cast the Izanami. Now, if you guys watch or read Naruto, you guys will know that Itachi uses this against his fight against Kabuto. Pretty much slipping him into like an infinite loop inside of his own head. All it takes is one look into Itachi's eyes and Thanos is fucked. Now, I'm sure you guys are thinking, oh, oh what if Thanos just closes his eyes? Well, if you guys didn't know, Itachi can also cast Genjutsu just by pointing at somebody. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty fucked up. So, after the Izanami gets activated, Thanos is just gonna be like a freaking lump of meat, okay? He's pretty much gonna be stuck in like a coma that he can never get out of. Now, a little bit of a background on this skill, the Izanami. The skill was originally developed to counter a skill called the Izanagi, which is the ability to alter destiny. Izanami decides destiny. Izanagi alters destiny. Now, there is one way to escape the loop, and that's if Thanos wholeheartedly and completely acknowledges his mistakes. And Thanos, being Thanos, probably won't see wiping away half the universe as a mistake, so he's gonna be stuck in the loop forever. Sucks. But that, that doesn't even matter, okay? He's gonna be stuck in like a coma, Itachi could just kill him while he's in the coma. You can't kill him? That's that's fine. It, the show's got like a crap ton of ceiling of techniques, okay? They got like a billion ceiling jutsus. Thanos can be the next tail beast! But the zero tail beast? Or purple beast? Nutsack beast? Fuck it. I don't know why I'm so fixated on Thanos' this chin looking like a nutsack. This is I thought that says something about me. Anyways, moving on. Number two, we have Doraemon from Doraemon. Yep, you heard me right. Doraemon is a robotic cat from the future and he can easily take a massive heating shit on Thanos. Adam, how, how, how is a robotic cat gonna, gonna fuck up Thanos? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now. Let me explain to you how overpowered this, this little guy is, okay? A little explanation on what he can do. He has a fourth dimension pocket on his belly where he can access limitless tools and gadgets from the 22nd century. 20, 22nd century? Yeah. And literally, whatever he pulls out, it's it's he can use it to fix whatever situation he's in. For example, he's got something called the What If Phone Box. What's it do? Well, you know, no, nothing too overpowered, just, you know, change reality with one phone call. That's, that's it. I don't know, you can do like, what if Thanos was allergic to peanuts? Thanos is now hyper allergic to peanuts. Just throw some slightly higher on his nutsack chin. And you're gonna see him on the floor seizuring with foam coming out of its mouth, okay? You know what, I, I don't really know what the, if that's what a peanut allergy does. I'm, I, I'm not allergic to anything, but um, you get the point. You can literally just what if Thanos out of reality and that's that. But oh, that's that's not enough for you. And Thanos somehow overcomes it with the reality stone? I don't I don't know. Yeah, maybe he gets out of it somehow with the reality stone. No problem. He gets out of it with the reality stone. He's super angry at Doraemon for making him eat peanuts and dying. That's, that's okay, guess what Doraemon also has? He's got an invisible shield that nothing can break. Nothing can break. Oh, and did I mention he's also got like this like Takami mat or whatever that he can use to travel back and forward in time. That's not enough for you, he's got a stopwatch that he can use to stop time. This little guy's literally got all the infinity stones and more without even needing to use them. All right, you're still not convinced that this little cat can take a shit on Thanos? That's okay, because guess what? He's got a button that he can press to erase anybody out of existence. Just boop. Thanos is gone. Forever. Yeah! Oh, and that was only like a few of his gadgets. Okay, he's got like millions more that he can use. Thanos does not stand a chance against Doraemon. Okay, prove me wrong. Like, what the fuck? You can't do anything against this dumbass cat. Now for what you've all been waiting for, coming in at number one on the list is Xenos from Dragon Ball Super. Why, were you were you expecting One Punch Man or something? Honestly, One Punch Man has a fair chance against Thanos. I just really can't say for sure if he'll win or not, you know, it's really circumstantial. Even though Saitama has proven to be almost nigh omnipotent as well, Thanos still has the reality and the time stone. While One Punch Man is really just brute strength, you really can't tell what's gonna happen. Like, it'll really depend on the context of the pre-fight, you know? Do they have knowledge of each other already? Or is it just they were plopped in a room, suddenly, and then, you know, Boom, that's the fight. One of the reasons why I don't think Saitama will, you know, 100% be guaranteed to win is because if you guys watch One Punch Man, you'll know that he takes his fights not very seriously at first. He's only ever used Serious Punch once. And that's like while he was fighting Boros, the strongest being in the universe at the time. And that's kind of the problem, you know? Saitama, if he goes into a room with Thanos, he doesn't know anything about the guy, he's not going to assume that he can just and make him disappear. If he did know that, then there'll be a whole different story. Anyway, back to Xenos. Xenos? Xenos? I'm sorry, I, I don't know how to pronounce these kind of things. So the reason why Thanos has zero chance of winning as Xenos is because he is not a universal being. 
He watches over the multiverse, like Monitor or Anti-Monitor in DC Comics. And you guys know how the house strong they are. And Xenos is the definition of nigh omnipotent. He has an ability called Erase, and from, you know, listening to the name, I'm sure you guys know what it does, it erases things. He can literally erase universes and galaxies with very, very little effort. In Dragon Ball Super, he erased six of the twelve universes because he was in a bad mood. That's half of the entire universe. He did what Thanos strived to do his entire life just because he felt like it, without the need of any Infinity Stones. That should already tell you how strong Xenos is. Oh, and by the way, Erase is also capable of erasing timelines. That's pretty fucking OP. Oh, guess what? He also can't die from Thanos' snap. Yeah, he's got a future version of himself that's always conscious of his present self. So, yeah, Thanos' biggest, you know, the shit, can't even kill him. And that's why Xenos is number one. So, there you have it. Five anime characters that can take a massive heaping boiling shit on Thanos. I mean, I know the first one is kind of a stretch, but hey, I mean, anything's possible in anime. If you guys enjoy this video, like and subscribe or I will erase your Minecraft accounts. Yeah, you want to pay another $20 for Minecraft? Probably not, so just, so just sub, okay? Please. Bye guys, I'll see you next time.